This is the 2024 Lincoln Corsair. This is what we call in our business a PHEV, which is a plug-in hybrid. You get the best of both worlds. Gasoline-powered motor for those long trips running around town, you can run on pure electric and it is plug-in. So there's all kinds of incentives from your state as well as from the federal government. What's new for the 2024 model year is the Blue Cruise technology. And we'll talk about that when we go for a test drive. The Lincoln Corsair has blue behind the Lincoln logo to tell everyone it is a PHEV. That's how they're denoting it, keeping it really clean and modern, as well as this beautiful grill, LED headlights and LED taillights. The Corsair delivers on comfort as as well as style. And there are three trim levels, the Premier, the Reserve, and the Grand Touring. And you can only get the plug-in hybrid on the top trim level. Our ceramic pearl paint color is an additional $750. This vehicle also has a panoramic sunroof, hands-free power liftgate, as well as fog lights. Standard is 19-inch alloy wheels. Our test vehicle has the 20-inch alloy wheels, which is an additional $1,150. The warranty on the Lincoln Corsair is four years, 50,000 miles, and there is no complimentary maintenance. You'll notice there are no exterior changes on the Lincoln Corsair for 2024. Coming around to the back of this beautiful pearl paint job, we've got an upper wing with an integrated third brake light. The wiper is here. Again, I would love it to be tucked up underneath to protect this wiper blade. They're very expensive and they also wear, and if you're using an ice scraper, they get damaged. Lincoln across the back, LED tail light all the way across, nice and clean, as well as a dual exhaust still making this gasoline powered vehicle look normal but there are two outlets one on each side one is for gasoline and the other one is to plug in the Lincoln Corsair seats five people and standard are 10 way power adjustable and memory settings for the driver's side step up to the top trim level and the optional package of the 24 way power adjustable seats for the reserve includes leather coverings as well as massaging seats for $1,285 heading into the second row there's actually quite a bit of room I have this seat set for me I'm 5'8 and there's tons of room here you've got the ability to have two child safety seats but you could put a booster seat in the middle in the center pull down the armrest and you've got two cup holders these seats do recline for child safety seats which is a nice little feature to see the kids aren't kicking the back and our test vehicle also has rear heated seats which is part of an additional package Behind the center console is two vents as well as four USB-C charge ports. Each cover has two. There is netting behind the seats as well. And this glass roof goes all the way back over the second row. There's a pull handle. You've got your audio system here as well as storage in the doors. Standard is a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine with 250 horsepower. Upgrade to that grand touring trim and you get a 2.5 liter plug-in hybrid powertrain with 266 horsepower. All of them are backed by an eight-speed automatic transmission, which is standard. EPA, if it's electric only, is 80 MPGE. But if you go to the gasoline only and you're on the highway, you'll get 33 miles to the gallon. That gives you 28 miles of all-electric driving range. Zero to 60 times, seven seconds in our test vehicle. It's all-wheel drive, but it's also available in front-wheel drive. Standard is 19-inch wheels or the optional 20. There is a linear shifter on this vehicle, and it's your start-stop button is to the left, and then park, reverse, neutral, and drive. It's something you gotta get used to. The first thing you're gonna note is when you get in the vehicle and you hit the brakes, it sounds like a spaceship. Now that's required by federal law, so you have to get used to that. So you can drive up to 28 miles on electric only. And we have a full charge, so we can do that. But in this case, we're gonna do a combination of both because there's also additional drive modes that are available. So right now in the normal drive mode, we're gonna turn that dial, which is right in the center. You have normal, preserve EV is obviously all electric and save that charge going the other direction you have an excite which is sport for most brands and then there is a conserve efficiency driving and a slippery icy roads and that's it so you've got those different drive modes and since we're doing a sportier drive with this car and most people are going to drive it in electric are going to use it for around town to drop your kids off at school go run an errand that makes a lot of sense in the electric mode and that's where PHEVs are great. You get the best of both worlds. Now, this is not the sportiest car on the road, but it does have top safety. Five-star National Highway Traffic Safety Administration rating, NHTSA, excellent. And that is because it has Lincoln Copilot 360, which is standard. The only thing that's extra when it comes to safety is Blue Cruise. It's not really a safety feature. It's more of something that you would use on a lot of highway drives or when you're just driving those boring roads and you can let the vehicle do some of the driving for you. It is an assistant. It is a level two autonomous. It is not 
self-driving. There is no such thing available on the roads today. Only Mercedes-Benz is working on level three and a couple other brands are trying to, but even the Tesla Autopilot is not a level three. So keep that in mind. So when you're told it's self-driving, it's more like self-centering and guiding you down the road. So you, you get used to that. You either like it or you don't. But remember, Blue Cruise is an additional fee and not everybody's going to want that. Personally, for me, it doesn't work. I drive a lot of back roads and I do get some highway time, but honestly, I'd just rather drive the vehicle rather than having the vehicle drive me. However, we've got some great technology in this car. Inside the Corsair are two special interior themes that are available, the Smoke Truffle and Eternal Red, which is obviously a red interior. 3.2 inch touchscreen that's running on Lincoln's SYNC 4 infotainment system, that's standard. The gauges are a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and that does include a head up display. A 14 speaker Revel stereo system comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well as Sirius XM satellite radio. Power adjustable steering column, genuine wood trim and adjustable ambient light and with all Lincolns you get the phone is your key which is an app that allows you to unlock lock and start your vehicle with a smartphone our test vehicle has the optional group 302a which includes heated and vented seats heated rear seats heated steering wheel wireless charging head-up display blue cruise active park assist and front and rear parking sensors as far as features we've got cruise control like I said right here you've got wonderful seating surfaces very comfortable on a long drive I've had this vehicle for a week and we've driven in a lot of places and I have to tell you it's pretty comfortable seating not every brand has this but you're dealing in the entry-level luxury compact crossover market and there's going to be a lot of competition so it's important that you test drive all of them we have links for that down below now you got this new center screen which has got the newest up-to-date uh, sync system which is the same system that Ford uses as well all of your controls for your climate are here kind of wish it was separate at times because you have to keep going through different levels you've got all your settings here and again everything is here it's easy to use and you can adjust it as you wish but you get that Lincoln personal assistance as well a lot of neat little features in that ambient lighting that everybody loves and of course Amazon Alexa you can go into the features and change those driver safety settings as you wish everybody's different everybody wants to do something slightly different they want the lane keep assist they want the alert all of that is completely adjustable best to do it while you're stopped and not while driving but all of that is here audio system is fantastic because of ASCAP rules I can't let you listen to the audio but I will tell you I'm not an audiophile but I do appreciate the nice top quality audio as far as handling it's not sporty but it does the job it is a Lincoln and Lincoln is known for luxury it's about peace and quiet it's not about sporty other brands that are competing with this there's a lot more sporty features to those and it's important that you get the right trim level that works for you this vehicle handles really well it's nice and confidence building the brakes are really nice balance with the performance not too much of each just a really nice well-designed balance this vehicle has no real changes in that perspective for 24 versus 23 the Blue Cruise is the biggest addition to this vehicle. Do love the gigantic head-up display though. Really nice and tons of information, easy to read and not distracting like some of the other brands. Coming to the back of the Lincoln Corsair, you've got 28 cubic feet of storage. Fold down that 60-40 second row and you're at 58 cubic feet of storage, which is quite a bit in this category. That does come with the charging cable. Not every vehicle does, and it's important to have that, especially if you're buying this vehicle used. You've got a 12-volt outlet here, as well as the ability to fold down those seats and some lighting. Underneath, there is a spare tire which most brands do not have, especially a lot of electric vehicles. Really important, especially if you get stuck. There are some pros and cons to the 2024 Lincoln Corsair. The luxury and the details, the ride, really a beautiful car. This is the entry level Lincoln and you can get into it at a pretty good price. And we'll talk about that in just a second. On the negative side, well, it's not as sporty as some of the competitors and there is an additional fee for the Blue Cruise. All these subscriptions start to add up and a lot of brands are starting to do that. So keep that in mind. You can't get this P ever plus plug-in electric version unless you go to the top reserve level and that makes it kind of expensive. Now let's talk about the competitors before we get to the price. The competitors is a pretty long list. The Lexus RX, Genesis GV70, Mercedes-Benz GLC, the Volvo XC60, BMW X3, Audi Q3, and the Porsche Macan, which is going to become all electric in the future. Right now the 2024s you can get 
gas or electric. So keep that in mind if you're looking at the Porsche Macan. Now let's talk about the price. The price for the 2024 Lincoln Corsair starts at $40,000, which is a pretty good entry level price to get into a luxury vehicle. Step up to our test vehicle, the reserve with the plug in hybrid and the Blue Cruise and all the goodies that we all want, making this car come in at $55,420. Now I suggest you take this for a test drive as well as the competitors and see which one fits not just your budget, but also your insurance, which is a super big factor that people always ignore. They look at the price of the car and their trade-in. Make sure to check that out. Of course, the lease numbers are going to be different and the manufacturer is going to have their incentives on their website as well. And there are incentives now available on the 2024 models as 2025s start to roll into the dealership. I'm sure you have some additional questions about the 2024 Lincoln Corsair. Put them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to get that conversation started. If you'd like to support our channel, please like and share. And of course, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link for that is in the description as well as for the website, the podcast, and the book. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lauren Fix.